Hey, uh, good afternoon, uh, Under Sheriff Bill Cooley here, and I want to thank everyone for coming out to uh, uh, cover this announcement of these two significant arrests that our, uh, our narco and intel guys were involved with uh, this past Friday. Um, it it kind of shines a light on our ongoing efforts to thwart narcotics activity and the corresponding misery and, uh, and violence that goes along with it. So uh, we're, we're joined today by uh, Special Agent Clint Winters from the FBI State Streets Task Force. Chief Craig Basie from the Buffalo Police Department, Sheriff John Garcia, First Deputy DA Mike Kane, uh, Chief DJ Granville from our Narco and Intel Squad, and Chief Fritz Alero from our Special Operations uh, Team. Uh, the first case I'm going to discuss is uh, a, a Buffalo man that was arrested, and he's identified as 38-year-old Antonio Broadus. And the second case we'll discuss is 59-year-old Michael Ray Jackson. Uh, Broadus is a uh, known narcotics trafficker and on federal probation. And on Friday, he was spotted on Jefferson Avenue where he appeared to be engaged in suspicious activity. Uh, thereafter, detectives followed him, and when a marked unit attempted to stop him, he fled at a high rate of speed. Eventually, he stopped in the vicinity of uh, Sycamore and Walnut Street, and in close proximity to that stop, detectives found a quantity of uh, crack cocaine. Uh, we believe that he discarded this crack cocaine as he was being pursued by the uh, by the marked vehicle. Uh, thereafter, a search warrant application was filed and was signed by the uh, Honorable Judge Savage, which authorized the search of his address at 513 High Street. Uh, during the execution of the search warrant, detectives recovered a half kilogram of uh, cocaine, a Glock pistol with an extended magazine that was equipped with a switch, which renders the uh, the pistol fully automatic. And also they recovered an AK-47 style pistol and an AR-15. Uh, all of these weapons were loaded. Video evidence was recovered from, uh, from the scene at the uh, search warrant that uh, demonstrates possession of this contraband and these weapons. The second arrest was unrelated to a large extent, except for as our uh, detectives were, were clearing 513 High Street, they observed a, uh, a gentleman that they've been interested in for quite a while. And with that, if Chief Granville, you uh, directed that detectives respond over to 45 Cayuga? That's correct. Which is uh, uh, Michael Ray Jackson's girlfriend's place. And uh, our detectives were in, in possession of information that uh, he may be storing large quantities of crack cocaine there for cocaine. So thereafter, uh, they began uh, the surveillance of 45 Cayuga, Michael Ray Jackson pulls up at that address, uh, goes inside the house, and he leaves, prompting our detectives to, uh, to follow him. They followed him for quite a while, and uh, eventually they get him pulled over. Uh, his registration was suspended, and his driver's license had been revoked. Uh, during that stop, he's in possession of about five ounces of, uh, of crack cocaine. Uh, detective, once again, uh, they pursued a search warrant, uh, seeking uh, authorization to search 45 Cayuga. And in doing so, they recovered about three quarters of a kilogram of cocaine. So, um, again, that search warrant was signed by uh, by Judge Peter Savage. Interestingly enough, uh, Chief Dewaga PD recently investigated an armed home invasion at that 45 Cayuga address. Um, so uh, that's uh, correct. Yeah, I'm sorry, Buffalo PD. But that's uh, you know evidence that we probably weren't the only ones that were in possession of this information that there was large quantities of cocaine there. So with that, I'll turn it over to Sheriff Garcia for some comments. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Under Sheriff Cooley, and uh, another job well done by our narcotics team, a very talented team led by uh, Chief DJ Granville. Thank you, Chief, very much. Always a pleasure working with our partners at Buffalo Police, uh, which uh, are led by uh, Chief uh, Macy that's here today and Commissioner Gamalia and our partners at FBI Safe Streets. Thank you very much Special Agent uh, Winters and uh, welcome to Buffalo Special Agent in charge uh, Mark Rick. You know again here we are talking about these drug dealers peddling poison onto the streets of Buffalo and Erie County killing people at a highest rate ever. Last year we had nearly 300 overdose deaths. Today, what we see here, 
I'm going to call it the trinity of drug dealers, which is poisonous, illegal drugs, illegal weapons, and cash. These guys are armed with fully automatic weapons. And as the under sheriff said, there was an instance where other people were interested in this, in this address, which they probably knew there were, uh, you know, drugs and, and money there. So we will continue to go after the drug dealers. Um, we don't care, um, you know, if this just makes a small dent. The way I look at it as sheriff is this is saving lives, be it the illegal firearms, be it all the crack cocaine and cocaine that is later mixed with fentanyl. If it saves two lives, that's a well done job. So we will continue to go after the drug dealers and uh, help our community stay safe. It goes to show you the firepower that the drug dealers have to protect their territory. And uh, fully automatic uh, pistol and uh, AR-15s. It is my pleasure uh, to uh, introduce um, our great partner in law enforcement, First Deputy District Attorney Michael Kane. It's been a pleasure working with you, sir, and hopefully we will continue doing so. Thank you, Sheriff. <clears throat> and thank you all for being here. These cases, um, while, while technically, I suppose, unrelated, um, deal with a similar problem that the sheriff just touched upon. And um, I, just, I can just tell you what's going to take place from here. Mr. Broadus was, was the 38-year-old man who had the, the weapons as well as the A1 level cocaine. Um, and when I say A1, that's a felony that's going to um, if he's convicted of that crime, he is going to be looking at a minimum of 15 years to life to a maximum of 25 years to life. Uh, so that is the most serious crime we have in New York State, um, that level felony. And Mr. Broadus was arrested and arraigned. Well, he was arrested on Friday. He was arraigned in Buffalo City Court on Saturday morning, and he will be returning to court tomorrow. Uh, we will be, we're scheduled to run a felony hearing. And then after that point in time, we will continue our investigation and potentially uh, put the case in, the, in front of Neary County Grand Jury. Uh, Mr. Broadus was charged with a number of counts, again, the most serious of which was the A1 felony drugs. Uh, he was also charged with a B felony drug count uh, with, that's a, with intent to sell the cocaine and two counts of the criminal possession of a weapon in the second degree. Interestingly enough, the, um, the assault rifle that he's charged with is the third count. That's a D felony level crime. The most serious crime that he's charged with in terms of the weapons is um, is the C felony, criminal possession of a weapon. Um, that handgun that um, that Under Sheriff Cooley described is a it's a Glock nine millimeter handgun that's outfitted with a switch, which, as he said, makes it fully automatic um, under the New York State statute and and maybe in the more common parlance, the more common language that we all use, it's a machine gun. Uh, that's what that gun is that's, that's used um, to kill people. There's no other reason to have it. And so he's charged with that C felony. He's also charged with possessing two other weapons. As I said, one's an automatic rifle, um, and the other one is the, uh, is the, uh, is the regular handgun. Um, so he's facing all of those charges. We're going to be moving forward with the felony hearing tomorrow and then we'll be putting that case in front of the grand jury. So um, having those guns, that, those drugs, and all that cash taken off the street is making our community safe. And you know, the, I, I know I say this every time I get the chance to, um, to speak to you, but the partnership that we have in this, in this room and in all the people that are standing behind you folks is, is incredible. Uh, you know, we have representatives from the Erie County Sheriff's Department, and we have representatives from the Buffalo Police Department, and the FBI, and we all work collaboratively together. The, um, the, the Michael Jackson case, Michael Ray Jackson case, has actually been in the works for a, for a longer period of time. Um, and in collaboration with our office, the search warrants on both of those cases uh, were prepared and ready to go um, with, with the assistance of the, of the lawyers in our office. Unfortunately, uh, Ryan Haggerty, who heads up our narcotics and intelligence unit, can't be here today, but he should get credit for the hard work that he's done in, his, in, in working together with our partners here. 
Uh, Mr. Jackson was also arrested on Friday. He was also arraigned on Saturday morning. He is scheduled to appear for a felony hearing on the 7th, uh, two days later, uh, from Mr. Broadus, and we will be ready to go forward with a felony hearing. And, and regardless of whether we run the felony hearing, uh, we will be presenting that case, or conti continuing the investigation, and likely presenting that case to an Erie County Grand Jury. Uh, Mr. Jackson is not charged uh, with possession of any weapons, but he is also charged with an A1 felony and an A2 felony uh, for the possession of the drugs that um, Under Sheriff Cooley described. So he is also facing 15 years to life as a, at a minimum on that charge, as well as you know the maximum is 25 years life, as I said. So. Um, you know that's all we have. We'll be moving forward with the investigation and the um, um, and and the grand jury presentation. But if you have any questions, or um, under Sheriff Cooley wants to take it from here, we'll, we'll be here for any questions. I would just add that uh, you know our, our partners with the uh, Buffalo PD and the FBI Safe Streets Task Force, and uh, you know obviously our narco and intel guys really approach these cases with dogged determination, and and that's what uh, uh, brought this whole thing together, both of these cases. Uh, Michael Ray Jackson operates uh, the group nightclub establishment on, on Broadway, and uh, there's, that place has uh, had its fair share of problems over the years. Uh, we'll open it up for any questions. Can you talk about just recently the group nightclub was someone who reached out to law enforcement asking for help at events being held there, and then if you turn around and find this out, what goes through your mind? Chief Macy, if you, I mean, if you want to uh, comment on that or. There was a uh, con uh, considerable amount of quality of life issues at the Groove. Um, some of the stuff that was taking place was directly connected to, to the Groove um, as far as the violence and, and their lack of security and precautions for the community. So, Is it felt that that was being used as a front for his drug trafficking acts, activities, alleged drug activities too? There's still uh, investigations into that going on, so I won't comment further. Can we talk about the importance of getting these drugs off the street, especially given that we're seeing overdoses at a high right now? So, again, you know, I can't say enough about the teamwork in, in getting these drugs off the street. We, we know the record uh, that we're setting with overdose deaths. That's not something that we should be, you know, setting year in and year out. There's a problem in the community. There's a problem with fentanyl. There's overdoses going on from people who are using heroin to cocaine to crack cocaine. It's being mixed with marijuana now too. I mean, this is a very, very dangerous drug and it's all about greed. So they don't care about their customers. And obviously, you know, you know, look at the public uh, safety issue to the public uh, due to the uh, fully automatic uh, weapons and to law enforcement. I'm very thankful that um, our, our chief, uh, DJ Granville, knows his job very well. And, uh, you know, we, we try to stop these individuals outside of the home so we don't have to go inside. Because once you open that door, you don't know what's behind it. And you know what's behind it on this time around? Our two um, AK 47s uh, and a fully automatic pistol that, uh, as uh, um, First Deputy uh, Kane, uh, DA Kane said, is basically a machine gun. So, yeah, that's what we're up against. Was there fentanyl found in this so particular, these particular busts? It's, uh, that's unknown at this time. There's still uh, further testing to be done at the laboratory and, and those results will be available shortly. And w are you guys pursuing a uh, search warrant for group or any type of surveillance there? Uh, the investigation's ongoing. Um, hopefully there'll be some more arrests out of this um, and we won't comment any further on that. Yes, two yes. separate cases. Okay. Yes, so we're at High Street, and then that's going to be Yes, and as uh, First Deputy uh, DA Kane said, these were already in the works. Um, his great team already was working with the law enforcement side of it. Um, you know, there was surveillance going on and so forth, and they just came about. Um, and I, you know, I, I believe in luck. It's hard work. It's being out on the street. His talented team being out on the street. These men and women. Uh, being out there, knowing the cars, knowing you know the um, the relatives where they live and so forth. So you know we got a great working relationship with the FBI Safe Streets team, with the Buffalo Police Department and the uh, DA's office. So this was already in the works. 
the reason it came together that day, let's say it's by chance, but um, it worked out very well for us. Um, obviously, as you know, uh, Michael Ray Jackson is the owner operator of the group. There's been many issues there, um, even from the time that the other sheriff and I were detectives at, at homicide. There were you know, a lot of shootings there and so forth. Um, so, you know, we're going to further investigate. Town Gardens, um, that has a bit of a reputation. And I know, especially, the, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I know the commercial development there, we've been through there, we've heard from neighbors complaining about that. Is that now a focus of you uh, with law enforcement to try to see what you're dealing with there and perhaps make even more arrests within that area with you, Town Gardens? You have a lot of good people that live there, and like any other community, Ron, they have their bad apples and they want them out. Um, you know, we work with the Buffalo Police Department with uh, FBI Safe Streets in that community and each every and every other community. But yeah, it's had its issues over the years. Uh, but again, you got great neighbors there, and uh, you know, Buffalo, we we need it to to thrive. And one of the biggest issues is crime in our community, and with bail reform and. Uh, you know, uh, the goalposts were moved on us in, in law enforcement when it comes to, to how we do our job. And, uh, but we will continue, uh, you know, moving forward, going after drug dealers, violent people, uh, federal probation. Uh, unfortunately for him, he violated it. And, uh, you know, we'll see what happens moving forward. Sheriff's, uh, I want to switch gears for a second if I could. Uh, in the most recent budget, uh, the county increased the Sheriff's Department's budget for uh, public information, release of public information, and new PIO. Uh, as you're aware, this county, is, your office is again be, being sued for failure to provide records under the Freedom of Information Law. Uh, the county has been, your office has been sued. Uh, this is the third time since 2018, fourth time since 2010. You haven't won a single one of them. And so my question is, one, will the plaintiff be receiving information that the plaintiff has requested. And so, you know, I, Bruce? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, welcome to Buffalo, by the way. So we, um, you know, we, I, I gotta tell you, we, we, we have a public information, um, I'm sorry, a freedom of information uh, uh, sergeant now that's dedicated to that. We get hundreds, thousands of, of requests, and we fill the majority of them. Um, I'm not sure from 2018, I, I started here in, in 20, two, two years ago. Um, so, you know, I'm not familiar with the ones, but you know, you win some, you lose some, but we always protect information that might go into an investigation, ongoing investigation. So, you know, beyond that, I can't comment on it. Can you tell me any lawsuits under FOIL that you've won? I, I, actually, I don't know, but um, you know, maybe we could do this another day and uh, I could get I that information. You, let's sit down and talk about it. I'm sorry? I'm open to that. Let's okay. Let's Thank you, Bruce. Thank you. And I will ask one other off topic. Uh, yes, sir. Again, it's been reported. I've interviewed you about the need for a new sheriff's helicopter. Uh, I was, I, I don't think I fully grasped what you were interested in at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, the Buffalo News reporting seven to eleven million dollars potentially in cost for this helicopter. What would you say to taxpayers who look at that and have concerns, even with the fact that they've talk, you've talked about a new jail, a new holding center? Mm -hmm. What would you say to people with the cost? Of I would say I, I inherited a very antiquated office with a holding center that was erected in 1938 with a bunker that um, housed our detectives. There was a Cold War era bunker that had sewage backup, no running water, toxic air. It was built in the 50s, given to um, Erie County in the mid 70s. And we've had, you know, a good run there. And uh, the place was gonna be, you know, closed up. So we had to uh, move our people uh, as everybody else needs a place to be housed. And uh, as far as the helicopter, Ron, it's gonna be 23 years old. If it was five years old, I wouldn't be asking for one. But it's down for maintenance more than it's up. So we have 90 miles of coastline in Erie County. We have a lot of drug surveillances. We can't do uh, police pursuits because they're dangerous to the public and to 
um, law enforcement, but you know, we, we have to continue doing our law enforcement work. If I came into office and I had a new holding center, a new helicopter, and a new place that wasn't a bunker, and that's not a cool name or a cute name, it's actually a bunker, I wouldn't be asking for any of it, Ron, but unfortunately, I didn't have it. My promise to the taxpayers was to make the Erie County Sheriff's Office a 21st century professional law enforcement office, and that's where we're going. And obviously, it seems like everybody is on board. The helicopter was approved. The bunker is no longer. We have a sign. You know, we, we had evidence in there, Ron. We had all our detectives in there. Can you imagine a place that you're working out of that has sewage backup, no running water for days, and cell phone service that's spotty? Because it's a bunker. It was supposed to be an emergency operations center in case of a nuclear bomb being dropped by the USSR. Well, they're gone. And the bunker's finally gone. And moving towards the uh, um, a new holding center, we got two different facilities that are costing the taxpayers a ton of money. And we have shown that by consolidating into one newer facility, we'll save the taxpayers in excess of $20 million a year. We have security staff, we have correctional health, we have kitchen, we have maintenance, we have you name it, we have it at two different facilities. We could do it under one and save a lot of money. Again, if we had newer facilities, Ryan, I wouldn't be asking for them. Could drones do the job more effectively, though? Could drones do the job more effectively than a helicopter? I'm sorry? Could drones, which you have, do the job more well, there's, effectively? Well, there's, you know, drones have their, you know, uh, a purpose. But there's not, you're not going to save a life on Lake Erie, on the Niagara River, um, with a drone. Why would it take you nearly five uh, so months to produce records? Two, two minutes. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry Bruce. to interrupt. Why would uh, it take so, five uh, Yeah, can we, sorry, then you can ahead. ask. Yeah. Okay. So, Thank you. you know, a drone has its purpose. Let's say we're at a scene of, of a investigation, uh, and the drone could go up and see everything. But <clears throat> we have the Buffalo Bills games. We have at least a dozen games here, right? And we have about 70,000 people in a stadium and the surrounding vicinity, probably another 5,000, right? A helicopter is needed for that, for security. We have a couple concerts a year. And uh, again, for a drone, it's not going to pursue a, a vehicle with a, a criminal, a kidnapped person. If it saves lives, we need it. I, I don't think there's any doubt that we need a helicopter. My, my question was, how is it that we have a 23-year-old helicopter that's down for maintenance more than it's up? That's a problem because if we need somebody rescued and there's a live loss, they're going to say, sure, you should have got ahead of this. So I'm very happy that the county ledge approved the new helicopter, and uh, we hope to have it uh, maybe by the end of the year. And at that point, what we're going to do is assess if we need a need for two helicopters, Ron. we got to see how much the 23-year-old helicopter will cost taxpayers and if it's reasonable. Because one helicopter cannot be in the air at all times, as you know. How would you get a new helicopter by the end of the year when the legislature has approved just $1 million of the uh, by, by, by chance, uh, Bruce, what happened was there was one in production and... Um, uh, whatever agency did not um, take the helicopter, so we jumped in, and that was Bruce, so we could save money in today's dollars, uh, because you and I and everybody else have noticed that when you go to the grocery store, you walk out with uh, a bag of groceries, and you, go, you wonder how you spend seventy dollars. It's inflation, so if we do it in, in today's dollars, Bruce, we save a ton of money. So do you have the money secured from the legislature at this point? Yes, sir. Any other questions on the, uh, the rest? Just identify these two again, yes. just to make sure we have it one more time. Here you have uh, Antonio Bradas. On your right, you have Michael Ray Jackson. Just to be just to be clear, the evidence from here on over is related to Antonio Bradas, and this is the evidence related to Michael Ray Jackson. And who's the one that owns the crew? This gentleman here. 